Nancy sits in her bathrobe at her vanity, and few, few too many Rob Roy's the night before. She applies her foundation with excessive difficulty. Her skin won't agree, oily and dry. She applies it and removes it with a wet washcloth, and again, she push, pushes her forehead back to hide the wrinkles, pulls down on her cheeks <laughs> until her crow's feet are gone. Who can stand the needles? It's too early. She stares at herself, purses her lips, and shakes her head. Looks closer and closer, and closer she looks, the more disgusting she feels, disgusted and embarrassed. Finally, she feels despair and sadness. With a scoff of disappointment, she walks away from the mirror to dress, but concedes to her urge for a final look. She swings around, rushing at the mirror like Betty Davis, hands to the frame. <laughs> Sorry. <A> big <laughs> and beautiful have no enemy but time. <coughs> a lousy day to feel lousy. After checking her watch, Nancy dashes to the bathroom to start the shower, then to the kitchen to start the coffee. Under her bathrobe, she wears a blouse, a cardigan sweater, and a pencil skirt. She puts on flats, and with the lights remaining on in her bathroom, she walks into an office space and sits at a desk. When the lights come up in the office, Keyboards click and the talk radio can be heard in the distance. The room is wall-to-wall -wall cubicles, bad lighting, the drone, etc. A man, a younger version of the boss, walks by. Hello, you must be Nancy. I heard we have a new employee. He liked me right away. <coughs> Two glimpses at my breasts. The color is, that color is just lovely on you. And a long pause at my legs. You weren't appalled? It was a compliment. The only kind of flirt allowed anymore. My supervisor checked on me 20 times a day. That's the attention I don't want. But the attention he wanted was brief. Is that what I wanted? Well, we work hard here, but we also have fun. And my door is always <laughs> open. <laughs> Just call my assistant for an appointment anytime. He took me to his place, then he pretended not to know me after that. Like he was ashamed. I was going to hold it against him. So when she returns to the shower, it's full of steam, and she steps in. She turns up the heat to her threshold of satisfaction and pain, leaning back so that the water pours over her shoulder and down between her breasts and legs. She reaches with one hand to her belly. She rubs herself to her thigh with the palm of her hand, her fingers nervous, her calves ache, her feet ache. She runs her hand back up to her breast and the scar underneath. Thank God for her legs. If not for her legs, Nancy wouldn't feel womanly at all. Eyes closed, she feels the pleasure of her own skin. When I was a girl, the men looked at me with shameful, hungry eyes. I loved to tease them in the summer, sitting in their laps. The short legged overalls riding up to the soft part of my thigh. Touch me a lolly, I used to say. Take off my shoes so I can walk barefoot in the grass. She strokes the inside of her thigh, eyes closed. How have things changed? If you do that, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> guiltily like they tricked me. <laughs> All they believe in is their work and the good of their work is if they do it out of kindness. But they know how to dig into you, don't they? It's true that everyone's waiting for you to fail. But they just rather you didn't even try. She continues getting dressed without doing her makeup and finishes before the end of the following dialogue. You had ideas? It's not like I dressed Catholic schoolgirl. I just didn't pretend to be offended every time a man stole a look at my ass. Uh, Nancy, this is uh, dangerous territory. <laughs> the workplace is dangerous if it prohibits us from admitting the truth, which is that people are attracted to each other and free to do as they want with their bodies. Um, it's when one person takes or attempts to take another's power over self or choice. 
And yet you changed your image. Yes, but I chose to change, and it was just my image, as you said. Nancy, Nancy enters a dark room and sits at a conference table with all the people. The head seat is empty. <clears throat> that first day, nobody recognized me. The lights go up, the people at the table chatter and laugh. I started wearing cans instead of skirts. <laughs> Drops her fingers down her legs to her high heels. And heels instead of flats. She tugs on her lapel. Bought a suit coat. Rubs her hair. Straightens my hair. Nancy pulls out a blackberry, holding it close to her breasts above the table. You also bought a blackberry. Signed up for a number of Twitter feeds so it would beep often. <laughs> <laughs> the boss walks in and sits at the head chair. Okay. Nancy's blackberry beep beeps. Nobody seems to notice. Checks it occasionally, looking at the boss, nodding and looking back. Is that? Who's that? Hence, she's so busy emailing. <laughs> Nancy replaces places her suit coat on the chair of her vanity. She replaces her heels with slippers. When she looks in the mirror, she pulls her eyebrow up and lets it drop. He noticed. She starts with her lips. Not right then. He didn't say anything then, but he noticed me. His assistant called that night? Phone rings, lights dim. Nancy sits in a comfortable chair with a Rob Roy watching television. Hello, I'm calling for Nancy Cole. I'm calling for Mr. Yeah, yes, hi. How are you? What? Oh, um, I'm fine. Thank you. Um, we received a resume from Human Resources regarding the manager's position. Yes. And we'd like to schedule an interview next week. How's Monday at 1.45? Yes, of course. Yes, thank you. Lights dim on the chair. Nancy returns to the vanity. I wore a skirt and I got the job. Mm -hmm. He said, Have I seen, I seen you in the, the building, building before? before? She turns to the side and crosses her legs. Cross my legs? She uncrosses her legs. I uncrossed my legs. Did he stare this time? It's been eight years. Maybe he'd lost his libido or just became one of those men who only relates to his work. Masturbating at night when he's bored and thinks everyone's gone home. It'd have been eight years for you, too. No response. Then what? Then he asked me to dinner. He said, I, I imagine, imagine you've, you've got, got other offers, offers so, so uh, how, about you how about I give, give me a chance, chance to convince, convince you? you? Then what? I forgot some paperwork at the office. Then what? Then nothing. I signed papers. Didn't he try to fuck you on the couch? No. And didn't he? Didn't you finally give him a hand job just to get him off your back? No. I'm confused. You must have me confused with an earlier version. <laughs> what happened was, I seduced him. I don't even know what that means. She stands and takes her jacket. With the hallway lights on dim and the darkness outside, the lightning, the lighting is warm. Nancy signs the paperwork. The boss signs. They both stand upright and shake hands. Welcome aboard. I'm sorry we overlooked you for so long. She shakes her head as if there's nothing. I just wanted this chance to show what I could do, and I was happy to earn that chance. I'm sorry to ask again, but have we met before? You look familiar. You've just seen me around. I recently changed my hair. And um, some other things. The boss began acting nervous, looked over Nancy's shoulder, collected the papers into a leather-bound folder, and checks to watch. She steps into it. Nancy, I... It's been eight years since we last had sex, and I never said anything. The boss steps back, worried about a lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to. It's just that in a few minutes, I'll go home feeling accomplished um, professionally, and I could go out tonight, and I could find a stranger to help me celebrate, or I could call an old flame, but uh, I'd rather have someone I know and respect and pleasure me in a way that only lonely writers fantasize about. She sits at the conference table and pulls on his lapel. Lights drop. So, that's it. He gave me the job, and I gave him the job. <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, uh, no, I didn't. The workforce transforms people into other people who they aren't. And I don't take pleasure in watching that happen. I changed to make money. My work has nothing to do with my sexuality. I enjoy sex. The women in the workplace... I mean, you have the power to change things, more collaboration, less competition.
think everyone who works in an office is miserable. You're miserable. And lazy and sexist. The floor outside Nancy's office is still. She eats an energy bar and sips coffee at her desk while reading emails and simultaneously making the final touches on her presentation. She prints it, checks the time, hurriedly stands, takes one more sip of coffee, opens a drawer, pulls out her toothbrush and toothpaste, and runs to the bathroom. She finishes brushing her teeth, washes her hands, stands up straight, then buttons her jacket and fixes her hair. Now they listen. Yeah. Mm.